<laughs> and there is renewed pride among owners of a car that last rolled off the assembly line in 1957. Bob McNamara reports. The more you look at them, the more beautiful they get. And the more you drive them, the more you love them. Hooked on Hudson's. <laughs> I'm tickled pink. I'm just as happy as I can be because I love this car. And besides, uh, I, I want to have something that not everybody else has. It's like a disease. I call it Hudsonitis. It's an incurable disease. You don't ever get rid of it. Hudsons. In their time, they were ahead of their time. But styled like whales out of water, it was not the car to be seen in. And having one was a label for life. I had my first car then was a 54 Wasp, and I had it in high school, and they all called me Hudson Bell, but that was okay. But when I went to my 25th class reunion, all of them asked me if I still had my old Hudson. I said, no, I don't, but I've got nine others. <laughs> in Wichita the other day, there were more than 300 Hudsons, Jetliners, Hollywoods, Hornets, and Herbie there, too. The nice thing about Herbie is that he's all original. Original paint, original chrome. That's the way he came out. <laughs> That's the way he was born. I christen the Essex Terraplane. Launched by Amelia Earhart, the Depression-born Terraplane evolved into record-setting race cars of the early 50s, before Hudson died somewhere between Detroit and Easy Street. The new Hudsons for 1954 are motor cars that one can own with great pride. But what Madison Avenue never did for Hudson, Hollywood has. What are you doing? I'm trying to drive you to the stove. Today, a few moments of driving Miss Daisy has made Hudson a nostalgic star. Driving Miss Daisy has really inspired a lot of people who have kind of forgotten what the Hudson is. I would say it's about double the prices. But like the respect it never won in its day, Hudson's are still not considered classics, and it's a rub. This is a collectible automobile. A lot of people driving Japanese cars. And there's an old saying among us hobbyists that the thinnest book in the world is a book on collectible Japanese cars. They came before rebates, recalls, and robots, an era when wood and chrome weren't plastic. I think really if they were still making them, nobody would have saved them. They're like everything else in life. You don't look for it till it's gone. And more than just old cars, love stories are what they've become. Bob McNamara, CBS News, Wichita. And that's the news from our world tonight.